So, um, what I would normally do is to see someone whilst we're sitting in a chair and talk to them. So you do all the preamble part um, whilst they're sitting. Um, and then when you listen to what their problem is and everything, then get them to lie on the, on the massage table. Now, the healing is not dissimilar to what you've been doing, except with a massage table, we don't do, we don't go under the table to do the back of these chakras, okay? Um, so the only time that if someone comes in specifically with a back problem, then when you finish the, the actual healing of the, most of the body, we get them to turn over onto their side so that you can get to the back. But if someone comes along that doesn't have a back problem, then you don't have to do that. You can just do, do the healing I'm going to show you. So we start off as we do normally. We stand a little bit away from, from our client. And we do our gap, so we go through the grounding, the protection, um, the attunement, and obviously the permission. Um, and then we, and some, you can sit down to do this. I often sit down, but I'm going to stand up this time. But it's, it's just a gentle touch on the shoulders, so you just make that connection with the shoulders like you did before. And I often do my attunement again like you did this morning. So once you make contact, just visualize the energy flowing through you, into your shoulders, down your arms and hands, into your client. And then we balance the chakras again, so we work on the crown. And again, just allow lots of space, but it's easier to get to when you're lying down like this. And in your notes, when you look at your notes, there are two, we show you two ways of doing this. I, I'm going to show you the way that I stick to, but uh, you do have a choice. And then we come around to the side, that side or this side, and we do the third eye. So again, just sensing where that field is. And then we move down to the throat, and you put one hand, the one that was over the crown, you put over the third eye, and the other one over the throat center, the throat showing crown. And this one, the one that's over the third eye, stays where it is, whilst you do the, the rest of the healing. So that stays there as you move down to the heart centre. Just sensing where that boundary is. Then we move down to the solar plexus, just beneath the ribs. And there's the sacral. And finally, the base chakra. So that's one way of doing it. And that's the way that I was taught, and I always do that way. The other way is you can actually move your hands down the chakras, like you know we did um, when we did the chair. So we balance the chakras. We made sure they're all more or less open the same amount. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we work down the, we scan the body. So in your notes it says put your hand underneath the neck. I tend to just very lightly touch the side of the neck because usually when people are lying down they get very relaxed, not that they drop off to sleep, which is good. So rather than dig your hands underneath and disturb them, I just lightly touch the side of the neck and gently put one hand on the shoulder. And then we go from the shoulder to the elbow. So this is the same as the, the healing of the chair. From the elbow to the wrist. And from the wrist to the fingertips. And then we go from the hip to the knee. From the knee to the ankle. And then from the ankle to the sole of the foot. And then you come around to the other side and you basically do the same. You go from the nape of the neck to the shoulder. Shoulder to the elbow. Elbow to the wrist. And the wrist to the fingertips. And then again, we go from the hip to the knee, from the knee to the ankle, and from the ankle 
to the sole of the foot. Now obviously because that client isn't in contact with the earth we really need to make sure they're grounded so we put one hand up each of the soles of the feet and really just bringing that energy down, really grounding them. And then when you've finished you go back to anywhere that you sense there was a problem so let's say I felt there was a slight change of energy on this right knee then I just put my hands on on that area for a couple of minutes. And then something which isn't in your notes, but something that both Kim and I do, when we finish, we come back and we just put our hands very gently on the side of the on the side of the head. That's why if you're sitting down it's much easier than scrunching over. And probably do that for two or three minutes. Now for those of you that have been on our community healing evening and if you've experienced that it's quite powerful, it's quite an, a really interesting experience. So we just do that, as I say, for a couple of minutes. <coughs> and then we put our hands on the shoulder as we start to close down and remembering just to give thanks to for being able to do the healing, for being used as a channel. And then we move back outside of the energy field to our, our grounding. We visualize roots from our client's feet as well. A bubble of light around ourselves, one around the client. And then it's important to come back down to the same level and just give them a little touch. Now, often when you're working on a, a table or clients on a table, they will doze off. So sometimes when I've finished, if I feel it's appropriate, I'll just leave them for a couple of minutes. You don't walk away, I just sit by the side of them. Um, so maybe they're in that really peaceful state. Give them, you know, maybe five minutes and then just give them a little squeeze on the arm and just say, you know, we finished or bless you or whatever is appropriate. And then as you're sitting down next to them, you just exchange whatever it is that they ask. So it's not difficult. Now let's assume, for instance, that Kim came in with a bad back, just to show you how we would do that. And I would tell her at the beginning that when we finished, and I'd give her a little squeeze on the arm or the shoulder, that's when I want her to turn over. So I haven't actually um, closed the healing session. So I've finished at the feet, I've gone to maybe a knee. I know she has a back problem because she told me. So I then ask her just to turn over onto her side. Do you want to remove the thing? This thing, yeah. It's so that then gives you plenty of chance to, to work on the on the back. Get, get to all the areas of the, of the back that you want to. But as I say, unless they've specifically come in with a back problem, then um, you don't need to do this. You mean roll back? Okay. Be um, and the other important thing is when you finish doing the healing and, and you, they're ready to go, you need to help them get up. Okay, don't just leave them lying like that whilst you sort of watch them struggle. So um, you just obviously get them, maybe one of their arms or something over the necks. And just <laughs> <laughs> Pull them up. We've got, we got a nurse here. There's a, there was a proper way of getting people out, which. I don't think that's it. Let me cut that out, Gary.